Hi dolls, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Dolly Pop. I'm gonna be doing a reaction video of Lady Dynamite Creates' Captain Maisie Deepwater and the Mermaid Pirate. No, that's not it at all. I'm going to be doing I'm of Lady Dynamite Creates' Captain Maisie. As you can probably tell by the thumbnail, I'm going to be doing a reaction video of Lady Dynamite Creates' Captain Maisie Deepwater, the mermaid pirate art doll. Okay, I know what you're going to say. Hey, Dolly Pop, react videos are just totally taking advantage of other people's artwork and claiming it as your own. Well, you're not wrong. But I'm hoping this series is going to allow me to point out some of the techniques that other artists are doing and also kind of share the love in the doll community. Plus, I'm always going to be asking permission of the artist before I do a video. If they don't like the idea, then I'm not going to do it. This is just supposed to be fun. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to react to this particular video is that I had just finished doing the Nerissa doll, and so I kind of thought it'd be fun to compare and contrast mermaid dolls. So let's get started. Hello, and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany, and today I'm going to show you how I created Captain Maisie Deepwater, the mermaid pirate. By the way, I love the idea of a mermaid pirate. It's an amazing idea. 10 stars. Whatever. 10 fingers. I give it a 10. That's what I'm trying to say. I give it a 10. I decided to go with Sirena as my base doll, but that was only because she was the only one that had a traditional mermaid tail in my collection. I've given her a Cleo arm to be used as her hook hand, so it'll look like a wood base. How do all of you remember the names for all of the Monster High dolls? Like, I collect Blythe, but like, I have no idea what main doll sculpts are or anything like that. I guess Serena makes sense because Siren, Mermaid, Monster. I mean, I kind of get that, but like, how do you guys remember all that kind of stuff? Now I can move on to getting her prep and I shave down her hair with my electric razor. Shaving the head. Like, that's genius. I'm sitting here with like scissors cutting away for some reason and she's just like Brrr! what what the hell i use a flathead screwdriver to loosen up the glue and the hair plugs i slide it in through the neck hole and i gently scrape down the inside surface where the hair plugs and glue are you're gonna see in one of my future videos that i just recently did this with a barbie head and it is not as easy as other doll customizers make it look i seriously sat there for like an hour with a screwdriver like she's doing and it took me forever. So I'm calling BS on all doll artists out there that say it's easy because it did not work for me. <laughs> Using 100% acetone and cotton balls, I can remove her factory paint. It should be noted that this could only be used on the vinyl of the head. If you try to use 100% acetone or nail polish that contains acetone on the body, it'll start to melt the plastic. By the way, that's why with Blythe's, I never use acetone to remove their base makeup. I always have to sand it off because acetone will melt it. Ask me how I know. Rebecca over at Vex Mini Studio sent me this yarn, and I have to say it's absolutely gorgeous and it's so super soft, and I love the chunky nature of it. I unwind all the strands to prep it for rerouting. However, these strands are still really chunky and are too thick to actually reroute one at a time. Each strand winds up getting pulled apart several times to reroute with, so I wind up taking about three or four portions off each one. To reroute it, I drape that section over my finger and then slide it onto the needle tool and plunge it down into the head. I only reroute about every other hole on the hairline and the part line, and about every three or four holes when I'm filling in the majority of the scalp. And one, I want to know where to get this yarn because it's gorgeous. I want it. Rebecca over at Vex Mini Studio sent me this yarn. Uh, two, like she's using really thick chunks and I use like little tiny chunks. And then I did every hole, which was stupid. So I'm glad that she kind of mentioned that there. When I go to do the part line, I simply plug it down into the holes and I can take either ends of that yarn plug and pull them down to the left and the right side. And then it's going to create a nice neat part. What I, I know rerouting where you're supposed to do like both sides and it's like really thick in there. And then you kind of fold them across each other so you don't see the whole, like... This is a much better idea. Follow her example. A gathering thread is just the longest stitch on your sewing machine. It's 
also called a basting stitch. So when I say it, it's going to be basting stitch, okay? <laughs> and you're making sure not to do a forward and back stitch at the very beginning and the end. We're going to leave those threads loose. With them sewn in place, I can start doing the gathering. And first I tie off the ends on the opposite side. And I'm going to pull the two threads that are on the same side of the fabric to gather up that line. So the reason why you do two threads is because when you're doing a basting stitch or a gathering stitch, like, like she's saying, it's very easy to snap the thread. So when you do two, it kind of gives you like a safety blanket. And I'm gathering it up to the same length of the bottom band. I will recommend that if you are sewing something to be gathered to sew down two rows of the gathering threads. When you're only sewing down one row, it has a tendency to twirl around the thread when you're gathering it. Okay, or that reason too. I use my seam ripper to remove all of the gathering threads. Wait, what? But you remove the, the basting? Like I've been doing something wrong this entire time. <laughs> Which means I'm cutting the pieces out on the diagonal of the fabric. So I'm making sure when I'm laying out my pattern pieces that the threads are not running up and down, but they're going diagonally across the fabric. How cute was it that she left in there that she ran out of ink in that pen? I mean, that's... I love it. Now to add some details. I'm going to be using some gem tack glue to attach some nail art decorations. I prefer to use the gem tack when I'm applying things that might be visible on to clothing because it dries clear and it's less noticeable if it squeezes out a little bit around the edges. I've never heard of gem tack before, but now I need to have some gem tack, right? At Leah Fix, you will be able to untie and take it back off, but I'm just going to be stitching it in place with some embroidery floss and tying it in a bow. And I will 100% admit it's because I hate eyelets. Can't tell you how many outfits I've completely destroyed putting eyelets on at the very end. If you've got any tips or recommendations to make eyelets go smoother, leave a comment because I need to know. Okay, I'm not really sure how she's doing eyelets. And with leather, it really shouldn't be a problem. I have this, like, go look at my Emily <laughs> video and you'll see that, like, I put eyelets in the back of the bodice. And something I learned with that is that you have to make sure you're hitting very hard. I usually have to put, like, fray check around the holes or it'll start to fray out and then pop off. Lady Dynamite, you and I can talk about this a little bit later if you like. <laughs> I'll try to help you as much as I can. Pointless because I covered it anyway, but I wanted it to have the whittled wooden look. That is a super cute idea. For the hook itself, I'm taking a bit of aluminum wire and I need to sand it down to be the same thickness as the peg for a hand. I'm not sure what aluminum wire is. I think it's what's called armature wire. I'm not 100% certain about that. But if you go to like the craft store, you might have better look. Yeah. You might have better luck looking for armature wire. I'm taking two millimeter craft foam and I'm heating it up and pulling it down over my mannequin's head. I make sure my mannequin has some hair so the hat will still fit the rooted doll. I use a hair tie to hold it in place so that I can gently pull out any of the wrinkles and form it into a dome for the base of the hat. What did we do before craft foam and warbler and stuff? What did we do? Hmm? For the brim of the hat, I cut out a donut. Donuts. I want a donut. As the monster high head. I glue a one centimeter strip of foam around the edge of the crown of the hat. I'm making sure that the bottom edge of the crown is only hitting halfway down that strip. Okay, I have no idea where she's going with this, so I'm kind of excited. Now I'm going to tuck in that brim and glue it to the underside of that strip too. I see what you did there. So instead of like the way I probably would have done is tried to glue, like glue the dome to the brim and then just put a strap around there. But this is much smarter because one, then she gets the strap exactly where she wants to be, which is a good idea. But this is that she's also not fiddling with like little tiny pieces and it like buckling and doing weird stuff. Like it's going to go together in a much smoother way. So good thinking. With the brim now attached, we can start giving it its signature tricorn shape. I'm just pulling up three of the sides and I'm going to tack those in place with some glue. Okay, I'm totally stealing this someday. Mark my words. Now let's get this hat painted. I'm going to be doing about a bazillion coats of brown paint because the foam just absorbs the paint like crazy. So if you don't seal it, you're going to be doing a bunch of coats. That's true. It was one time that I decided I was going to paint some boots that my wife had printed and she printed them in black, which is 
fine, but I was trying to make them yellow. So I'm just praying for like days and days and days and days and days and it's never turning yellow. I don't know. It just never got even close to yellow. <laughs> so if you're going to paint something, it's kind of dark before and, and you want it to be sealed. I always try to spray with MSC first because I just feel better about myself with that. But I guess I don't I don't know. But make sure that you prime your things because it's going to help you a lot. I know it seems like a silly step, but it is going to help you. When I finally got a very solid opaque color, I'm going to start adding some color variation to this by just dry brushing on some different shades of brown. Keep in mind areas that are going to naturally collect dirt and just be darker in general, and areas that are going to get touched a lot and rubbed so that the color gets lighter. When you're going to be aging something or making it look like it's real, it's important to remember not only like where the dark shadows might be when you're trying to do like a, a dark wash on or something like that. But it's important to remember the places where things get touched a lot. Those areas get a little like shiny and a little worn down and oftentimes can use like a little bit of white or something like that. So it looks like it's been rubbed down quite a bit. While browsing for supplies for this gal at the craft store, I ran across this decorative box, which looked kind of like a treasure box. So of course I had to get it and fill it with some treasure. I'm using some crumpled up tin foil and I'm just hot gluing that down into the basis filler. That is such a smart idea to fill it up first before you put a bunch of other stuff on top of it. I probably would just fill it with crap. <laughs> I would just fill it with the beads and be like, Why is this taking so long? Why is it not sticking in there? I 3D modeled and printed her a spyglass and a pirate sword. I mean, you know that I love a good miniature to go with my dolls. Period. Now to really bring the piece alive, I'm going to be brushing on some dark brown paint. And I'm brushing this on any of the areas that have creases in them or areas that would just get a little bit more gunky. Isn't it amazing how just a little bit of like extra detail makes things look so much more realistic? I love it. Now to get started on our bag, I've cut out a front piece, a back piece that has the front flat fold over, and a gusset. Now with those two pieces pinned in place, I can begin to sew them together. I'm going to be stitching very carefully using a straight stitch. Take care around the curves and make sure you're going slowly and gradually lift and shift the presser foot so that it gets a nice smooth curve. So something another customizer once told me is you should think about sewing little things like sewing like little chopsticks. So you might be just like picking up and moving the machine or picking up the needle and moving it and, and just sewing one stitch at a time when you're sewing little tiny things like this. So it doesn't all have to be at once and doesn't have to be really fast. Take your time if you need to. Since I want my bag to be a fully functional bag, I'm adding in a snap button. Woman after my own heart. I love things that are functional. I am so ready for summer to be here. And something you don't realize when you're a kid is your mom wants summer to get here just as badly as you do because she is tired of getting up at the butt crack of dawn to get you up and ready for school. I just want to sleep in. A hundred percent. Ten thousand percent. To fill the bag, I've printed some clip art treasure maps and I'm going to make these look a bit more worn and used by burning the edges and then rubbing an X-Acto blade along the edge to give a torn look. So I did something very similar to this when I did my Hermione doll. I was trying to make parchment scrolls for her little cart. And so I took some paper, some parchment paper, and I, I dyed it in tea so it got that nice brown texture. And then I kind of did the burning on the outside. But I, I tried to make it like a little bit darker on the edges too. Not just the burning texture, but like just a little bit saturated more with tea on the edges. It turned out pretty cute. You can Boom. check out my Hermione video. I used my airbrush to touch up the black paint. The airbrush gun that I'm using is a dual action gravity fed brush. I like the dual action better than just the regular single action airbrush because I have more control over how much paint or air is coming out at any given time. You're painting at doll scale and on plastic to boot, so I feel like it's very easy to have the paint beat up if you're too heavy handed and I find that it's just really easy to do that with a single action brush. Always get a dual action, period. Always. And if you're going to buy one, buy one that's a little bit more expensive. I suggest the Iwata, the Iwata HBCS, I believe it is. You know, you can start with some cheaper ones, just you're going to have more frustration than if you bought the good one. I'm brushing on the gold leaf adhesive to the inside of the fins, and once it becomes clear, I can begin to lay on the gold leaf. I brush away any of the excess. I seal this in with Krylon gloss varnish. I did not have good luck with gold leaf, so I'm really interested to see how she does this and how it turns out. So she's currently kind of like pressing it down with the brush and then she starts to wipe it away. Just so you know. So shiny. I really love how the gold just shines through. It's just so pretty. 
Okay, that turned out way better than when I did it. I did it on Moraine's ear and that was a pain, a pain in the tush. So I need to know her magic. Somebody please give me some of her magic. I want it. Once I realized that the irises were going to give me a lot of trouble too, I decided to just fill them in temporarily and try to do the eye shape on a different layer. I had trouble getting the eye shape down and I didn't want to ruin that work by trying to get the iris on the same layer. As long as you're making sure your Mr. Super Clear layers are sprayed really well, it's like saving the layers so you're not going to risk ruining work underneath it. So I had a very similar issue to this recently when I was doing the Barbie doll, where like just the pencils did not want to attach to it. So I don't know if maybe like she was a little heavy handed with the MSC when she sprayed it on or if it wasn't completely cured. But I discovered that like when I wiped that off and like was able to spray it and it had like that kind of papery texture, I did so much better. But it was a pain. I mean, I, I redid that face three times before I was happy with it. Doing the doll's eyeshadow is probably my absolute favorite part of the face up process. I just wish I could do my makeup half as well as I could do hers. My eyeshadow never looks this good. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> I was thinking that tonight when I was trying to put on makeup to do this, that like, why can I do it on dolls, but I can't seem to do it on myself. That doesn't make any sense. It does not make sense. Do you have a least favorite part of the face up or just customizing the doll in general? Removing the hair. 100%. I use my pastels to brush on a general eyebrow shape and then I start shaping them further with my eraser. When I'm happy with this shape, I begin to add in some individual hairs, and I'm doing this with three different colors of watercolor pencils because I want some variation to the brown there. That's exactly how I do it, too. I think it's the best, and I think it comes up with the best end result, too. But that's just me, personally. Your mileage may vary, though. And then I get her sealed with a coat of Mr. Super Clear before starting layer two. By the way, I love that she does, like, the little spray can things up in the corner to show how many layers of Super Clear she's on. Is that useful to you guys? Is that something you want me to do? Because I can start doing something like that, too. Although, sometimes I lose track. <laughs> I don't know how people, like, sometimes I'm like, well, that looks pretty good. I better spray it. I better spray it. <laughs> I pump up her eyeshadow just a bit more and start adding in some definition to her lips. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of feeling the eyes just the way they are right now. Like that kind of weird, creepy siren. I'm kind of loving it like that. Like that. I'm kind of loving it like that. I wish I could speak. The edge of the eyelid so that it appears that the eyelid is creating a shadow on the eye. This will give the eye a rounder appearance. I love that eyelid. I want that eyelid on my eye. Can I get it on my eye? That's what I really want. I want that eyelid that she painted on my eyes. I start adding in her eyelashes and I'm using my Faber-Castell. The Faber-Castell pencils have a much harder lead, so they're perfect for making eyelashes. Okay, I kind of feel like she should have done like a gold tooth, right? Like a gold or silver tooth, right? Right? Are we vibing here? Maybe not. Maybe that's tacky. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just shut up now. I'm only going to be doing a minimal amount of styling to her hair, so I'm taking my metal chopstick and my flat iron and just lightly curling it. I lightly brushed the hair out before I started curling just to remove any of the loose fibers, but I didn't flat iron this beforehand. The yarn was just this naturally silky. I repeat, I want this yarn. Give me the yarn. I want it. Give it to me. Stay tuned to the end for some final photos. And remember, always be creating. I love the hook. It's so cute. I love it. And it turned out so beautiful. She didn't show what she did with the other hand, but it looks like she stuck some gold, like painted it black and then stuck some gold in there too, which looks super cute. And it looks like she put some stuff on the arm, like the upper arms too, which just is like a nice little detail. Like, ah, oh, that's so good. And she just looks beautiful. Her eyes are amazing. And the hook is just so cute. Oh, oh, just, it's just all so adorable. And I think she just did a fabulous job. Just absolutely perfect. What do you guys think? Well, I hope this was kind of entertaining for you. And maybe you learned a thing or two. Maybe not. Eh, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think about this type of video and, and me doing them. 
Also, I kind of hope that you found a new artist out there that maybe you didn't know about. Lady Dynamite Creates is like such a fantastic artist and she's just not that well known yet. So I hope she blows up really soon because she's a fabulous artist. So go and follow her and enjoy her stuff too. But don't forget about me. And if you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications. Every like, share, comment, and subscription helps my channel grow. And I really enjoy talking with you all afterwards. So go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think because I really honestly want to know and I want to see you guys comment. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope you had a sweet time.